AMD's answer to NVIDIA, the PlayStation 6 Portable, and the 50-60-50-60 Ti shenanigans. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, April 16th, 2025. Before we jump into the tech news, just wanna remind you that we do have our brand new Twitch channel, UFD Music, where we're, we've got a whole host of giveaways going on. Firstly, we just launched a brand new album that is streaming exclusive right now over on the Twitch and YouTube streams. We got an RTX 5080 we're giving away over on the Twitch channel. We've got a 7800X3D, 7900GRE PC that we're giving away over on the Twitch channel. And then on the YouTube channel, that stream, we're giving away a Sapphire Nitro Plus 9070 XT. So if you want to check out any of that, the new UFD music channel, whether that's YouTube or Twitch streams, you can do so at the links in the Vizio description. But while I'm giving away a 9070 XT, that doesn't mean I'm not interested in the 9060 versions of that because we now have specs coming out from video cards on exactly what this GPU is supposed to look like. Essentially, it's gonna compare to the 5060 Ti in both VRAM amounts as well as kind of its pricing as far as we know, but the 9060 XT is supposed to have 2048 cores while only having eight or 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Now that amount of cores puts it at exactly half that of a 9070 XT and its memory bandwidth puts it at exactly half that of a 9070 XT. So in all regards, this is half of a 9070 XT, both in cores as well as memory performance, even if the memory amount might stay the same. So hopefully this costs at least half the amount of what the 9070 XT does at 599, so that should cut this down to 299 or so. Now that's in theory, if the eight gig version is exactly half in every way in memory and in core and in memory speed, you would expect it to be at that price and then hopefully the 16 gig version is about $50 more than that, 299 and a 349 price. That theoretically should be very competitive with where the 5060 Ti is landing, which we'll talk about in a little bit after I talk about today's video sponsor. Hey there, fella. When you're done with this video and start typing out your comment, what kind of keyboard are you typing on? Is it some old standard mechanical keyboard? Because let me tell you, what you should be using is a nice new magnetic switch mechanical keyboard from today's sponsor, Melgeek. The Made 68 Pro is a super well-designed and super stylish 65% keyboard that features a super cool light box and block side panels, perfect for snapping on little plastic brick pieces. The not so secret weapon the Made 68 Pro has up its sleeves are the magnetic TTC KOM switches. These interesting little guys are quickly becoming the standard for high performance gaming keyboards due to their smooth actuation, higher registration precision, durability, and most importantly, their customization. The Mate 68 Pro switches allow you to adjust your actuation point from 0.1 millimeters to 4 millimeters, so even the lightest press gives you an input. The Mate 68 Pro also features a whopping 8,000 hertz polling rate and a mere 0.125 millisecond delay, as well as support for rapid trigger and light box. With rapid trigger, you can actuate whatever key you're pressing faster than a traditional mechanical switch because the magnetic switches don't need to travel to reset for a follow-up input, meaning you have insane leg up in competitive games like Fortnite. With Lightbox, you can customize the look of your keyboard. The Made 68 Pro features this really nice lighting feature across the back of the board that lets your customized color choices shine through. All of these customization features can be accessed and modified via Melgeek High. This is the web-based hub that serves as the interface for interacting with the adjustable features of your Made 68 Pro. This is where you can explore creating macros, shortcuts, and adjusting your actuations and lighting. Grab yourself a Made 68 Pro from Melgeek today to not only crank a sick 90 faster than your little cousin, but type that first hot news comment that much faster. Check them out for yourself via the link in the description below. Huge thanks to Melgeek for sponsoring. Actually, I lied. It's gonna be a little bit further past today's video sponsor because we gotta talk about the PlayStation 6 Portable, which is now being reported that Sony is gearing up with AMD to come out with a custom chipset designed to make it so that they have a low-powered PlayStation six coming to the market. Now the details about this are still kind of ambiguous, but the idea is it's gonna be a 15 watt chip that's gonna be somewhere between the performance of an Xbox Series S and a PlayStation 5. And the whole point is that it's gonna run at low power so that you get some battery life out of it, but it's not gonna be the PlayStation 5 portal that currently exists where it just streams games either from the PlayStation or from the cloud, but rather it's gonna run games natively. However, it looks like it's gonna run PlayStation 5 games 
according to the details that I'm seeing, that's not 100% clear what's going on, but one of the reasons it's gonna be powerful is it's gonna be on a three nanometer node, which will allow it to have a lot more power efficiency than what's currently out on the market, even if it has somewhere between 36 and 40 compute units, kind of similar to what we have in the Strix Halo right now, but a cut down TDP. In case you wanna see how the Strix Halo performs, you can check out a review of the new RG Flow Z13 right up there. We just released that video last week. If the PlayStation 6 Portable can get anywhere near that Strix Halo chip, especially as it has a couple of years to still go into development and mature, that might be a mighty fun little gaming handheld, but it's gonna be PlayStation games only likely. So that's that you're gonna have to be a big investor in the PlayStation ecosystem for it. So you might be wondering, who, why are they making this? Which is exactly what I'm wondering about OpenAI because reports are coming out that they're looking to make their own social media setup, social network. They wanna integrate OpenAI and all of the chat GPT stuff into a social feed and it's not quite clear if they wanna make this their own app or if they wanna make it as it's integrated into the current chat GPT situation and you like post the things that you're talking with the AI about. It's a bit more confusing to me than the PlayStation 6 Portable. Not exactly sure how to parse that, but don't worry, Reese is gonna parse you some deals while we wait to talk about the 5060 Ti. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's a short and sweet little episode today, starting off with the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless DTS headphone set, which you can pick up for half off for only $139.99, making it $140 off. But then next up, we have this NOCN 24.5 inch 1440p 240 hertz IPS gaming monitor, which you can grab for only $169.99 with the coupon applied, making it $130 off. And hey, Hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. Looks like you don't have to save me that much money for the new entry level GPUs from NVIDIA. We have the 5060 and 5060 Ti being announced by them officially. Everything that came out is exactly what we've been talking about in the past couple of weeks. The 5060 is launching at the price of 299. The 5060 Ti is launching at the price of 379 for eight gigs, 420 for 16 gigs and NVIDIA released their own benchmarks here, which, uh, you know, reviews are going to be coming out shortly after hot news goes live. And I can probably just surmise what it is because NVIDIA, even though they said they were going to send us a card, didn't send us a card, even though they sent us all the other ones, so we don't have a review of the 5060 Ti. It's a mild generational uplift, and prices are good if you can find them, but who knows what the market's gonna look like, especially with stock issues, whether or not it's gonna be for sale and tariffs. That's probably the blanket review. It's fine, especially if you can get it at the prices that NVIDIA is saying, which who knows if that's actually gonna happen. So that's the gist, 5060, 5060 Ti, all looking like, you know, NVIDIA is still pulling the same garbage marketing tactic of showing it with DLSS 4, with it having the multi-frame gen, saying it's 6.3 times what the 2060 is, it's insane. But that's likely not gonna be the case, especially when you look at Resident Evil 4's numbers with it just having ray tracing, it's not actually that much better. And then when you bear it down to bare bones when it comes to regular performance is going to be at, at most i would guess 15 percent in a lot of games but one of the things that nvidia is not shying away from is the fact that tariffs are impacting pricing right now they have said that the pricing of the 5060 and 5060 ti are what they are however that does exclude tariffs the msrps are not inclusive of regional vat or any tariffs so that can change especially with the nvidia spokesperson saying that there's not a whole lot that they can do about it things have been dynamically shifting in that regard the high tariff were implemented. Now they're delayed for 90 days. Then they're also excluding some microchips, but not all, but they're excluding like completed stuff, in, but not the actual components to put things together. It's an uncertain landscape of knowing how to properly price and predict things, but NVIDIA is not at least shying away from it. However, one of the things they are shying away, especially when you look at hardware unboxed video from yesterday on this whole thing, is it looks like they don't want to put out reviews of the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gig. With them saying that the Ti card is only getting 16 gigabyte cards seeded out for reviews and that the eight gigabytes had to be coming from an AIB partner, but Hardware Unbox reached out to AIB partners and they said that they couldn't seed them for reviews. So it's only gonna be able to come out afterwards when 
when reviewers are going to be able to purchase them at retail. And very similarly, one of the weird things is that the 5060 8 gig, while it technically doesn't launch until May, the weird part is the review embargo is today. So all of the cards have the same review embargo, the 5060 and both 60 Ti's are allowed to be talked about as of today, but only one of them is allegedly gonna be put in the hands of reviewers, which is the 5060 Ti 16 gig, and then the other two are source it for yourself, which, you know, could be conspiracy theory that they have something to hide with the eight gigabyte amount, or they have something to hide with the 5060. However, I mean, it's a good thing with the 5060 because then that means even though we have about a month until they launch, there's gonna be space where you can have reviews well ahead of time of knowing how they perform. But with the 5060 Ti, I'm not necessarily sure that um, NVIDIA is hiding anything with the eight gigabyte. I think more than likely they're just responding to all of the craziness that happened with the last generation launch of the 4060 Ti, where essentially the entire internet was against the eight gigabyte version. So it makes sense for them to put the best foot forward of the 16 gigabyte version. And if eight gigabyte reviews wanna be done, well then you can do that afterwards. But the thing that they wanna promote primarily is the 16 gig version. I mean, this happens all of the time when it comes to seeding samples of review. The whole point of them doing that is technically for marketing. You have companies like Intel who are, you know, typically send out the i5s and the i9s for review. And then the i7s have to be acquired retail or otherwise from a third party company. More than likely, reviewers will get their hands on it. They likely won't have to purchase it themselves. They should be able to get it from an AIB partner, just not before launch day. But I don't know if NVIDIA is hiding anything or if they just didn't want to deal with the uproar of the eight gigabyte stuff, which you guys had a lot to say about in Friday's episode of Hot News in the comments. We got Static at Home saying, am I the only one who thinks almost $400 is still crazy for a mid graphics card? Insane. I mean, it's, it's not really all that unprecedented, right? Like the GTX 1060 launched how many years ago? 2016, nine years ago? I, I mean, that launched at 299 for the Founders Edition. That's $400 for the 60 class card. NVIDIA is still pricing the 5060 at 299. Technically the 1060 launched at 249 for the non-Founders Edition cards, but, but even still that'd be $331. They launched what the 3060 at 329. They decreased the price on the 4060 to 299. They kept it the same for the 5060. It's it's not like the prices are actually going up that much when you look at adjusting for inflation and they haven't gone up nominally. And in fact, the 5060 Ti went down in price considerably. As long as the prices are real, the the quote the quoted MSRPs are not a problem in my in my estimation, even if it's only a 5% performance increase, not increasing the price two years later and still giving you 5% performance increase. I don't understand. It just feels like everybody wants to be mad at this point. I'm not saying that specifically about you, Static at Home. The sentiment just feels so negative right now. And it, like, it just, just kept happening in comments like Lawrence Bester saying, it is patently ridiculous to go for the 5060 Ti in a world where the RX 9070 exists. It's $170 more, man. What do you mean? That's a lot of money. Even if you're just looking at the 16 gig version of the 5060 Ti, that's $120 more. That's a 27% price increase. And obviously, you know, that's just MSRP. Looking at, get, get a 9070 for 549 right now. You really can't. I mean, likely the same is gonna happen for the 5060 Ti, but regardless, I, like you're, that's, that's a significant amount of money when we're looking at like, the mid-tier situation. And then, I, like, we also got people like Anton here saying, stop buying GPUs with eight gigabyte VRAM as you will always be disappointed since even three-year-old games don't run with well with less than 12 gigabytes of VRAM. That's just wrong. That's just not true. Three-year-old games run fine on eight gigabytes of VRAM. You're more GPU limited than you are VRAM limited when it comes to the cards that have eight gigabytes of VRAM right now. Should that be on a 70 class card and above? No, but on a 60 class card, eight gigabytes of VRAM, is actually okay because you're core limited more than your VRAM limited. I really like, I just, this, this sentiment that we have that like, it's never good enough. Nvidia didn't actually raise the prices, but uh, the market's gonna make it more expensive. So it's not good enough. Nvidia didn't do enough. Or Nvidia is giving us 16 gigabytes of VRAM for only $50 increase at just a $30 increase from the 4060 Ti 8 gig from last generation, but that's still not good enough. Or just having eight gigabytes of VRAM on the Nvidia card 
for the 5060 is not good enough, even though it's GDDR7, and it's actually the memory speed matters a lot in those situations. It's not just about memory amount, and you have AMD who is still just giving you GDDR6. That's gonna be significantly slower than what Nvidia is putting out, but that's okay because it's AMD. Guys, I get a lot of this is hard right now. I get a lot of the stock issues are, are just unresolved, and I think those are the, the realistic problems. But like what Nvidia is actually pricing things at is not a problem. What AMD is actually pricing things at wasn't a problem. The real world situation became a problem, but if we can get down to those MSRPs with time, then these are gonna be decent GPUs at the prices that we're getting them for. And eight gigabytes is plenty. Eight gigabyte of VRAM is plenty for a 60 class card. I know I'm gonna get flamed for that statement, but like, just don't play it on ultra. The 60 class cards aren't meant to be ultra gaming GPUs. You're you're actively increasing the amount of VRAM instead of just playing the with the card where it's meant to be played at. And yeah, uh, it's just, enjoy your tech guys. Just enjoy it, man. No, like it's not that bad out there. Get a Steam Deck OLED, man. Those are great. Those run great. And those don't have a ton of VRAM. All right, Steam Decks don't have a ton of VRAM, but they run perfectly well for what they're supposed to be. Anyways, I'm supposed to be done with this episode of Hot News, so I'm, I'm gonna do that and uh, I'll argue with you guys tomorrow, I guess.